Hello everyone, Piers from Piers Invest Plays here today. Year to date, Lending Club stock has risen 207%, but it has shed 36% since November. Has the stock peaked or can we expect higher stock price in the future? In this video, we will understand its business, its financials, its future growth outlook and review its chart using Elliott Wave to see how we can make money. So, stick around. I think you'll like what I have in store for you today. Lending Club, ticker LC. Lending Club is a peer-to-peer -peer lending company headquartered in San Francisco, California. It was the first peer-to-peer -peer lender to register its offerings as securities with the SEC and to offer loan trading on a secondary market. Lending Club, which uses machine learning and data to streamline online lending specifically for unsecured personal loans, saw its stock price fall more than 36% in November and December. There was no obvious reason for the drop other than broader macroeconomic factors such as stronger signs of inflation and recent fears about the Omicron variant. After two spectacular quarters, it is rather shocking that investors don't see the story yet. Lending Club does not get nearly the same positive attention or brand recognition as popular fintech stocks like Upstart and SoFi. It might just be the most underappreciated fintech story of the year. Lending Club digitally originates unsecured lending assets, currently at a clip of $3 billion per quarter. The majority of these are refinancing of outstanding credit cards, credit card balances. The value proposition for would-be customers is enticing as they pay 4 to 5% less in interest and at the same time improve their credit score. Lending Club does so successfully by leveraging its proprietary AI and machine learning models across marketing, fraud and credit assessment and 15 years of data footprint. Consequentially, its marketing, fraud and credit costs are industry leading. Earlier this year, Lending Club closed on its acquisition of Radius Bank and the accompanying bank charter. Additionally, approximately 80% of loans, which is $2.5 billion quarterly, are sold in its marketplace, where it generates substantial fee income, which is origination and servicing. In Q3 2021 alone, Lending Club generated $175 million of revenue from its marketplace. The marketplace revenue directly correlates with the origination volume and is expected to grow with origination volume growth. It also transitioned to a new model where instead of selling all of its loans into the marketplace, it began retaining about 20% of those loans on its balance sheet and collecting recurring interest income. Loans held on the balance sheet are three times more profitable than those sold to investment firms. Combined with the low cost deposits to fund the loans put on the balance sheet, Lending Club is generating high margins. Lesson known is that during 2020, management worked hard to better rein in its expense base and improve its efficiency. This has helped create a tremendous amount of operating leverage, which is when revenue growth outpaces expense growth. The result has been a completely transformed company that has produced results faster than anticipated. In March of 2021, management projected that the company might lose upwards of $200 million for the full year. But after achieving profitability in the second quarter, surpassing everyone's expectations, things have changed quite a bit. 
Lending Club now projects to generate about $800 million of revenue on more than $10 billion of loan originations for a full year profit of between $10 to $15 million. Lending Club is now generating similar loan originations, revenue, and profitability as fintech companies like SoFi and Upstart. Yet, the market continues to give it a $3.5 billion market cap, compared to SoFi at about $15 billion and Upstart at $17.4 billion. Lending Club only trades at just over three times 2022 projected revenue and about 20 times to next year's earnings, both completely reasonable for how fast the company is growing. There is reason to believe that higher inflation, potential rate hikes, and continued impact from COVID-19 could create some difficult market conditions in 2022. But I see no reason Lending Club cannot continue to do what it has been doing. Its main use case is credit card consolidation, where it offers people with high credit card debt the ability to pay it off at a much lower annual percentage rate. Revolving debt in the US, which is mostly credit card debt, slacked a bit in July and August, potentially due to the Delta variant, but it bounced back and grew nearly 12% in September. Total US revolving debt is now at more than $1.01 trillion, providing Lending Club with plenty of opportunities to help borrowers pay it off at a cheaper rate. Additionally, non-revolving debt, which includes the installment loans that Lending Club makes, grew another 7.2% in September. There is no reason to think October wouldn't have been a strong month for the company. And if the Omicron variant doesn't result in lockdowns, I would expect the full fourth quarter to be solid. Despite less optimism about economic growth in 2022, it is still expected to be strong overall. Also, Lending Club's installment loan offering, the company's core product, has become incredibly versatile. It can serve borrowers with FICO scores ranging from 600 to 800 and it has been getting more and more popular among the company's nearly 4 million members when it comes to auto refinancing. It has been used a lot for home improvement and there is a buy now pay later use case for more expensive elective surgeries. More than half of Lending Club's customers come back to the company for a second loan. This along with management's efforts to streamline the expense base has led to lower marketing costs and the tremendous operating leverage. Lending Club is highly profitable now even on a gap basis. Let me explain now. Lending Club delivered $27.2 million of net income in Q3 2021. This was on the back of higher originations of $3.1 billion and growing net interest income on increased assets retained on its book. It is important to note that the $27.2 million figure is gap net income and not adjusted EBITDA or adjusted net income. However, there were also two notable adjustments. The first adjustment of $17.5 million relates to origination fees that are earned on day one, but are amortized over the life of the loan asset. This is the prevailing accounting treatment. The second adjustment relates to expected lifetime losses on loans originated. Under the new CECL accounting standard, banks are required to recognize lifetime losses on day one, instead of recognizing these on an incurred basis or amortizing over the life of assets. If I adjust by amortizing that $34 million charge over three years, then the provision for the current quarter should only be attributed to around $2.8 million. 
So its net adjusted income for Q3 2021 is approximately $75.7 million, which is a much more accurate reflection of the economic value accretion in Q3 2021. I ignore the impact of taxes as currently Lending Club has carried forward tax losses. Now, assuming a similar origination for Q4 2021, I expect Lending Club to generate an additional 20 to $25 million of net interest income on a gap basis. So all else being equal, I expect Lending Club to print somewhere around $50 million of net income. However, do not forget to adjust for the notable adjustments mentioned above, which will repeat in the next quarter. And it will repeat for the next two to three years as Lending Club is growing the portfolio size. It seems that Lending Club is building future accounting gap income in the next two years that is currently not fully visible in the numbers. Every quarter that passes, that accrual income figure will steadily grow by $20 million to $30 million and straight to the bottom line. Mr. Market is simply not getting. Once the portfolio matures, these losses will dissipate and then reverse. By then, it is going to be too late for the party. At the current origination rate of $3 billion per quarter, Lending Club should grow its portfolio to $7 billion in three years' time. This is probably a conservative assumption that is not factoring in any growth, which is approximately 20% growth per annum for the credit card's refinancing or the untapped opportunity of auto finance. Lending Club has plenty of capital and growth opportunities as well across different products. For example, as I said earlier, two-thirds of Lending Club members have an auto loan that can be refinanced by Lending Club and save customers approximately $80 on average per month. The incremental marketing cost for Lending Club is negligible given its existing 4 million members. This is a no-brainer for Lending Club and its members. Lending Club can then further lean onto the $300 billion auto loan business. Its stock is 100% mispriced. The company is growing like gangbusters and the bank fintech model is positioning Lending Club to make a lot of money and create even more value for its 4 million members down the line. It generated a nearly 35% return on average equity in Q2 and 27% in Q3. It also retained its leading market share in the unsecured personal loan market and is automating more than 80% of loan applications, yet does not trade with the same high multiples that other comparable fintech companies do. Given market conditions, I would be more concerned if Lending Club had a crazy high valuation, but it doesn't. It's trading like a value stock, but has all of the characteristics of growth. Needless to say, I feel very confident holding this stock long term. I think investors who have a long term investment horizon should take this opportunity to buy the dips. This is also indicative in the charts where I see the stock price to experience some pullback before it increases considerably in the next six to seven years. Now, let's review the chart of Lending Club. Sorry for the interruption, but I wanted to take a moment to remind you that if you like this video, please don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button and hit the notification bell icon so you're notified when I upload a new video. With that said, let's get back to our analysis. Looking at the chart for Lending Club, it is very clear to me that the corrective wave, which is wave C, is completed. And now wave 1 is in progress. Wave 1 is typically 50% or 61.8% retracement of wave C, giving us a price range of $75.34 to $92.27. After wave 1 is completed, I expect wave 2 to resume, which is typically 
50% or 61.8% retracement of wave one. Again, giving us a price range of $38 and $48.36. After wave two is completed, I expect wave three to resume, which is typically 161.8% of waves one to two, giving us a short term price target of $190 and 45 cents. After wave three is completed, I expect wave four to resume, which is typically 38.2% retracement of wave three, bringing the price down to $136.18. After wave four is completed, I expect wave five to resume, which is typically 161.8% retracement of wave four giving us a final price target of $224, which translates into a 650% profit in the next six to seven years. Now, let's summarize. To me, the current stock price of Lending Club is an excellent time to buy. I would recommend nibble any pullbacks and accumulate corrections. And I would recommend that you hold it for the next six to seven years as I expect a price target of $224, which translates into a 650% profit in the next six to seven years. What do you think of this analysis? Please leave me a comment and let me know. As always, please don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button and hit the notification bell icon so you're notified when I upload a new video. Until then, bye-bye.